There is the five second board being shown then. You can hear the revs are rising and the race about to get underway. And it does so now and away they go. And it's Lee Morgan from pole position that's heading down into the first corner at Cops. And they all look to have made it away apart from one. We'll pick up who that is in a moment, but that car does get underway now. And it's Lee Morgan then that looks to have the lead as they head through Maggots and Beckett's for the first time. It's Matthew Booth in second place, Andy, as they make their way up the Wellington Strait. Yeah, Lee Morgan really running wide there as they went out of Beckett's corner and that you'd have thought would have compromised his run onto the back straight, but he holds on to the advantage, like you say, Booth in second, Mitchell third, so they're in grid order. Paul Butcher there losing a position though. Uh, that was possibly Alok Iyengar going up the inside at uh, Brooklyn's corner. We'll pick that out for you at the end of the lap. Uh, Paul Butcher, a, a real stalwart of F1000 racing. Through they come then, pretty tight at the moment and uh, I think slipstreaming will be a factor in these races, won't they? These kind do rely quite a bit on that toe and at the moment at least it's keeping them nicely grouped together yeah absolutely there's the 80 car of uh, Daniel Gore being run by uh, Mittal cars also race uh, in bike sports and sports 1000 as well of course so there they are two champions together out front Lee Morgan and Matthew Booth there is the 11 car of Elliot Mitchell the 24 year old hotel manager from Yorkshire he was the clubman of the meeting at Silverstone two years ago, although that was a, well, it was on this circuit actually, wasn't it? The national circuit on that occasion. The leaders already then turning their way out of Brooklands, uh, out of Luffield and on towards Woodcut to complete two laps. And we'll see on the first flying lap, have we got a lap record yet? No, not quite, 55. 1-8 on the first flying lap for Lee Morgan. The target, don't forget, is 55.02, Richard Mitchum's lap time. But we've not quite got there yet, but uh, we're not too far away from Andy. Uh, yeah, give them another lap or so to uh, get a bit more heat into the tyres, and I think they will get there, won't they? Uh, the car that stalled, by the way, I think was Kale's Cole, wasn't it? Because she's just come through. Uh, quite some way behind the leaders, who, as you can see, are already on the Wellington Strait. Uh, also, the car that I saw diving up the inside of Paul Butcher down here a lap ago uh, was Rob Wellham, who uh, was twice a race winner in the uh, admittedly shortened 2020 campaign, taking a pair of victories at Snetterton uh, before sadly not finishing in the last race of the year. Dean Warren there, 22, comes through with Adam Walker right ahead. Uh, Adam Walker is in turn applying some pressure to Jack Tomlin. And although we've got a bit of separation between the top six and everybody else, within those two groups, Ian, nobody is really escaping. No, it's some very tight packs. You can see number 14, Adam Walker there, trying to make a move. He is chasing after the number 60 car of Jack Tomlin. Now, he has made up some ground. He's up to ninth. He started in 13th, which a sense he would have been a bit disappointed about, having had some good results last season. He was third in the championship last year, had three podiums along the way. So uh, this morning's qualifying a bit of an underachievement for him. Possibly he had problems, but he is now making progress in the right direction. Now you can see he's the car with the red nose cone, just about to turn in ahead of number 14, uh, Adam Walker, the train driver from Leeds. So Jack Tonner, one of the uh, students that we have racing with us this season. Uh, yes, so down into uh, Cops they go again. Still Lee Morgan with the advantage, but it did come down that time. Matthew Booth was a little bit quicker, uh, and they've not actually got any quicker <laughs> as the laps have gone on, have they? The fastest lap still Lee Morgan's from lap two, a uh, 55.18, and there is the man that set the pace. Uh, a little bit earlier on in the race. Just been looking on the uh, YouTube chat as well. Dax Ward, a regular driver in the championship, uh, uh, watching along at home. A shame that Dax can't be out on the grid this weekend, but uh, hopefully we'll have him back uh, at a future round. Good that he's uh, still supporting the championship from home, uh, even though he's not able to race with us. The uh, Paul Butcher group then comes down through uh, Brooklyn's corner. Seventh position for Paul Butcher, and then it's sort of everybody else trying to uh, stay on his tail. Yeah, interesting that Dan Clue has not really been able to do anything much uh, of note in this race so far. Winning in fifth last year's champion, of course, had three wins last year, the same number as did Lee Morgan. Rob Wellham having the other two 
uh, of course, last year. But he's there in fifth place at the moment. And he's just actually dropping a little bit off the pace of Dan Gore as well, I noticed. About a second and a half behind him now. So four really in the leading group. Morgan Booth, Mitchell and Dan Gore. And a gap back to Clues and Wellham. And a bigger gap back to Paul Butcher, who heads the field from seventh backwards. Now is Lee Morgan. He's the leader of the race. We're on to lap six. It is a 15-minute race that we have for the Swallow Hill Homes F1000 Championship this weekend, of course. And over the line goes Lee Morgan to complete another lap. And that gap looks a bit bigger. It was four tenths of a second. It's gone out to three quarters of a second now. So Booth and Mitchell uh, taking the fight to one another. And uh, Mitchell, I think, was involved in that non-finish with Rob Wellham that you mentioned earlier on in that they had a coming together at the Agostini Hairpin at Snetterton. Uh, Mitchell, who last season finished fifth in the points, had a couple of third place finishes. Yet to get that uh, elusive race victory, though. Wonder if that's going to come uh, this weekend. Well, he's uh, going the right way about it in that he's asking all of the right questions here of uh, Matthew Booth, but uh, it can be a little tricky to overtake in these cars because, of course, they're all, uh, in theory, near enough identical performance wise, and then you have. Uh, quite a lot of downforce to play with here actually the front and uh, rear aerodynamics will uh, be uh, certainly creating quite a lot of downforce that makes it hard to follow the other car in front uh, that closely because of the, uh, the dreaded turbulent air uh, so Mitchell's going to have to really find something here if he's going to get past Booth I thought a lap ago he might have been close enough but he's uh, subsequently dropped back a bit from the second place man these two had five podiums between them uh, last season, three of them for Booth, two for Elliot Mitchell, and as you said, neither of them were able to win a race last year. Lee Morgan had um, the most wins, well, joint most, actually. He won three races, Dan Clues won three, and uh, Rob Wellham won the other two. Top three cars getting together again as they come into, uh, into Luffield to look out of my commentary box window, so the gap between them has gone down. There is the 42 car of Paul Butcher, 51-year-old Chief Technical Officer from Cambridge. Started out racing the Cation Scholarship, as it was then called, back in 1999. He's had a couple of seasons, 2016 and 2017, when he's been the runner-up in the championship, but for all of his years in Racing Jedi, he's yet to win the championship. There is the number one car of Dan Clues, and it's Rob Wellham that makes a move there, and he crossed the line to the tenth behind Clues, but he's gone through and up into fifth place now, Rob Wellham. So the winner from Sletterton last year up into fifth place as he really does hope to be able to get a good run of races, a good season together this year. It's a new livery for him this year. It looks incredibly smart for the uh, young driver from Suffolk. Back to the battle for the lead though, Andy. And uh, again, Morgan's pulled out a few lengths, I reckon. Yeah, every time uh, Booth goes on the defensive, because Mitchell's got a bit closer to him, it obviously plays into the hands of the leader, who's uh, clearly pushing because he was right up to the edge of the road there. Mitchell is closer now, though, to Matthew Booth than he's been for quite some time. He's going to have a nice toe down the straight. Can he do to Booth what um, Rob Wellham did to Dan Clues a lap ago? Well, no, he can't, is the answer. Wasn't close enough into Cops. And then look at the car wriggling around over the kerb. That's that dirty air I was talking about. He tried to carry the speed through Cops' corner. But because he's so close to the car ahead, uh, he just didn't have the grip that he needed. But he closes back in here through Beckett's corner. I, I do think here that Elliot Mitchell might be a bit quicker. I think you might be right. Uh, Matthew Booth's got a five-second penalty for exceeding oh. track limits, though. So, uh, if things stay this way, that will drop him down not only to third position, it will drop him to fourth. Um, it just depends how big that gap is going to be back to Dan Gore in fourth place. So, Matthew Booth has given himself a little bit of extra work to do there by incurring this five-second penalty for exceeding track limits. Um, I wonder if, A, Elliot Mitchell will be aware of that, and B, if it's going to make any difference at all to how he drives the remaining five and a half minutes of this race. Well, what it does do is it makes this doubly frustrating for Mitchell now, doesn't it? Because not only, uh, yes, he is now ahead of Matthew Booth on corrected tyres, but Booth is still physically in his way 
holding him up. So Elliot Mitchell will be sat there, if he does know about this penalty, thinking, well, come on, you might as well let me through now. Let me have a crack at Lee Morgan, because I think Mitchell's probably got the pace to go after the race leader. Gets a good exit there from Beckett. He pulls out of the slipstream nice and early, but that was too early, I think. He lost his momentum, had to go to the outside. Anyway, now he switches back to the inside. He's late on the brakes, and Mitchell goes for it for second place. Uh, of course, Matthew Booth is still going to fight this, and fight it he does. He's got the inside for Luffield. Mitchell sends it on the outside, but that's the dirty side of the road. There's no grip out there. He can't get the power down, and Matthew Booth fends him off. Oh, so a good effort there from uh, Elliot Mitchell. It comes to nothing, though. Um, the gap between Booth and Gore has now gone out to more than five seconds. So he will, if it stays this way, at least finish third. He's got to be careful not to pick up any more time penalties because after five, you could then get another 10 to make it 15 in total. And that could change his finishing position rather drastically, regardless of what Elliot Mitchell was able to do. Meanwhile, Lee Morgan just seems to be able to drive his own race out for him, doesn't he? best lap of the race. Oh, and we have had the lap record. I've well, missed this. 54.98 to Elliot Mitchell. So Elliot Mitchell in third place has got a lap record. And I can see some marshals there moving in the background, which suggests we may have lost somebody. Um, yes. Who it is, I couldn't tell you. Oh, we're going to find out now. They're a long way it's off the road. Uh, Nikita Abramov. I thought it might be. That's the TSR run car for the driver that's done some... Uh, rallying and cross-country rallying in Russia to some rally cross in the UK for appearing in F1000 last year. Uh, right, OK. Well, uh, that looked like it was mechanical rather than driver error. He pulled the car well out of the way, so no need, uh, probably not even any need for yellow flags, really. He's that far off the track, so uh, shouldn't impede the race too much. Uh, the race that is now into its final four minutes, and there you can see the <laughs> marshal giving the fire extinguisher to Nikita Abramov whilst they push the car away. That's a new one. I've not seen that happen before. Uh, didn't seem to be any immediate need for the fire extinguisher, though, which is good news. No, absolutely right. So here is the battle for, well, the lead in inverted commas, because Matthew Booth has this five-second penalty. That lead Morgan Booth in the middle, and then Elliot Gore. They are coming up to catch and shortly lap um, the 73 car, which is Chaos Cole, the Irish former carter. Switching to F1000, she'd hoped to be able to race in it uh, in F1000 last season, but uh, the COVID pandemic sort of put the plans on hold somewhat. She's keen to possibly race in W Series in future, but getting some useful single seat experience here in F1000. She's going to get some experience of being lapped by Lee Morgan very shortly as well, Andy. Uh, yeah, and Lee won't want to hang around here because, uh, as we've sort of mentioned, he might not be fully aware of this penalty for uh, Matthew Booth um, because they only display that uh, board, if they even do display a board, for one lap. So they, they may well have missed it. Uh, it looks like Matthew's coming on strong as well in the final part of the race, doesn't it? Because he has reeled in Lee Morgan uh, quite rapidly over the last few laps and Lee gets a bit squirrely there out of Luffield and the back marker, uh, Kales Cole, doesn't exactly leap out of his way, so she now does pull to the right-hand side of the road. That definitely delayed Lee Morgan a little bit. Uh, the gap was 0.72 of a second between Morgan and Booth. It's come down to exactly half a second now, and although Booth has the penalty, he still physically has the ability to have an effect on this race. If he forces a mistake out of Lee Morgan, uh, then that could have real repercussions. Black and white driving standard flag to number six, Max Windhauser. The software developing the Tim Gray Motorsport run car. Interestingly, he started racing in the BMW Car Club Championship, the original iteration of it back in 1988. Had a long gap out of racing before coming into Sports 1000 and then F1000. Anyway, back with the race in hand. We have got a minute and 20 seconds left to go. So coming into the closing stages of this race, which is being led by Lee Morgan from Matthew Booth and Elliot Mitchell on the road at least. There though, it's Paul Butcher in seventh place. Yeah, who's catching Dan Clues. Clues has faded um, through the middle part of the race. We saw him lose out to uh, Rob Wellham, uh, what, about 10 minutes ago or so, and he's now um, a good few seconds behind Rob Wellham and being caught by Paul Butcher. Nice little scrap coming through here as well. I think this is for ninth, isn't it? It's the, yeah, the 30 of Alec Iyengar, the, number th the, the blue car. Dean Warren, Jack Tomlin, Ed Falkingham all together behind him. 
Uh, so an awful lot of pressure there for Alan. He's quite experienced in this category now. And we've had a spin coming out of Luffield. I've just spotted out of the window. Whoever it was has just rejoined. And uh, when they go past our commentary box, I'll be able to tell you who it was. It was the number 67, which was Andrew Wheels. The, yeah, the 67 car, which started towards the back of the grid. He was running in 16th position. As the leaders now go across the line, I think they have belatedly been shown the last lap board, so we've got on to the final lap, although I don't think the first car or two will have actually seen it. Meanwhile, we're looking at this uh, battle a little bit further back. It involves the... I'm just trying to work out who involved, but let's have a look at the leaders instead, because they are heading on their last lap around uh, Beckett's. Lee Morgan, he's led from the very start of this race. Booth in second and Mitchell, who's a little bit further back now in third position, but that doesn't really matter with this penalty that Booth has picked up for track limits transgressions. So they can all sort of effectively sit in these positions now. Uh, and it'll be one, Morgan, two, Mitchell and three, Booth. Oh, it's 15 seconds now for Matthew Booth. So oh. Booth won't get third. He won't get third. We'll work out where he's going to finish in a moment, but up to the line comes Lee Morgan and he takes the chequered flag. Lee Morgan takes it then from Elliot Mitchell in second place. And once everyone's come through, we'll work out where Matthew Booth is going to slot in. Dan Good. Thank you very much, Ian. Lee Morgan, fresh out the car. He just hopped out like nothing had happened. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, Mr Booth definitely uh, kept the pressure on. It definitely wasn't getting any easier. But um, I think it just drove faultless, to be fair. I don't think I made a mistake. So that, that was the key to it all, really. One mistake. I think they were in the toe all the way around, so it was really hard to break away. So I just had to just keep going, keep on the lap times in, no mistakes. And uh, yeah, it was tough and they probably looked to be getting out, but yeah. <laughs> Have a rest now, ready for tomorrow, starting probably P8 on the grid for the reverse grid. So it's going to be uh, an interesting race. Yeah, definitely so. And you say uh, Booth was uh, quite close behind, but were you aware they actually had a 15 second time penalty at the end of that? Oh, right. No, no. <laughs> I mean, I knew he was around my tail and like, I knew I had like no issues. So I knew like turn one, I could like really push through that on the last lap just to make sure that he was definitely... Uh, Fair enough fat not to get a toe down the back straight, so I saw he had like a, a warning, but I didn't really see what it was for, so I thought, I saw him go wide a couple of times, but yeah, I just had to uh, keep going anyway, because I thought if he wouldn't pass me, then I still lost the race, so. <laughs> well, from our point of view, that looked like a calm, controlled race all the way throughout, and a, a very well done. Thank you very much.